everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play CK2 Crusader Kings 2 with King Godwine, the Rotund of England, age 37, still carousing his life away. Why not? Why not enjoy yourself? You're the King of England. You should enjoy it, right? Okay, so in the last session then, an epidemic was spreading across the country. Obesity. To be more precise, the king, rather jovially, holding lots of celebrations and uh, continuing to send strongly worded letters, and when they failed, had uh, vassals brought to him under arrest so that he could tell them to desist. And then, of course, invite them for a drink or two when they accept and send them on their merry way back home without any further issue. Oh, and yes, we, we might have waged a war in Hungary for a dwarven vassal, and then we finish the session by capturing an entire duchy, the Duchy of Ulster, and then the council voted to put this man in charge, whilst the king was gallivanting in uh, Brittany. He had no choice, it was a coronation and he was invited, okay? Uh, so here we stand on the precipice of creating the Kingdom of Ireland title. For after the last session had finished, I was just tidying up a few things and noticed that uh, our English count, our Anglo-Saxon count, that was the adventuring, conquering hero of Briefney, he felt a little bit vulnerable on his own over here, surrounded by those Irish tribal tribes. Uh, types, sorry, tribes? Mm. Might fit. Uh, but uh, he welcomed the protection of King Godwine to protect him against those uh, those tribes. So uh, yes, we have uh, another county added to the list just off camera. He accepted our offer of vassalization. We may have had to cross his palm with a bit of gold just to sweeten the deal, but nonetheless, no wars, no blood was shed, and uh, he's currently suffering with food poisoning. But uh, yeah, another loyal vassal brought under our loving wing wings bingo wings uh, right okay so the goal for today's session is simple really to keep trying in earnest to uh, get one more county because that's all we need we need just one more to form the kingdom of island title and then a lot of these vassals will probably swear fealty to uh, their, 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 their legal overlord the king of Ireland. There's a couple of ways in which we can do this. There's three ways, really. We can try and get somebody in our court with a claim, land them, and press their claim. Option number one. Option number two is to continue trusting Duke Egidio of Man, who is a master diplomat and politician, who got bested by his dwarven compatriot in the council uh, shenanigans. <laughs> He didn't see the war with Hungary coming, did he? And he has only ever, in several years of trying, fabricated a single claim on the county of De Verd. Not the Duchy of Deobarth, and now he's been over here a, a little while and he's not got any claims here either. Perhaps his political and diplomatic nous is not as good as people says it is. Nonetheless, he's our friend and we will entrust him to do the job eventually. The final way to uh, nab a county is to do exactly the same we did here, and that is by way of papal claim. There's a new pope in town. He likes us a fair bit. We've got a decent amount of piety. Just a little bit more is required, but not much, to get a said claim. 181 we need, we've got 171, so we're kind of on the cusp. And of course, we'd have to also get it past the Pope. But we'll see what happens. So we are kind of close. But in the meantime, it's October. November is feasting season. So we'll start preparing a feast uh, in November. We'll just give the King a chance to recover from the feasting and the frivolity of Brittany. Further afield. France is ruled by a woman, of course, Queen Richeau of France, House de Barge, Barge, Bag. Um, she's not a capet, you'll notice. How very strange. 
Uh, <clears throat> yeah, in fact, I got the time to stop uh, messing around with some schemes as well. Another part of the deal of him joining our protection. The, 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 the initial original Crusader King of Aquitaine has finally passed away. He's here. No, he's not. He's here. He died at 78 in the year 1026. Three years ago he died. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but he ruled for a very long time. He was probably one of the last living men alive. Living men alive. Yeah, obviously. It was one of the last living men left alive, I suppose, um, from the, the original Johann I reign. <clears throat> I don't think there's going to be anybody else out there right now that was alive when he was. They'd have to be in their early 80s. We could actually do a search of all people. No filters and search by age. Okay, there's a few 80-year-olds here. So some of these will have still still been alive when Johan was alive. Just about. I'm thinking we're probably 80, 81 is probably the cutoff. We could calculate it if we want to be precise, but there's not many left. Let's put it that way. There's not many. We've been going for 93 years. I mean, I'm intrigued now. I'm intrigued. Johan the first died. 971 at age 56. Oh, I think we might be I think we might be well gone. Oh no, we're well gone, aren't we? Yeah, I'm thinking I said we're done like 990, that would be more that would be a little bit uh... So if we had it at 56 in 71, we are now how many years after that? 30? We're 60 years after that. Oh no, there'd be a hundred and summer. <laughs> there'd be a hundred and summer. They're long dead, long dead. There's nobody walking this earth uh, unless they uh, have got the fountain of youth in their castle. I must be thinking of Semra, Semra, Semra the first. Anyway, long story short, is dead. All right. Uh, and yes, Italy is beset by two revolts and a papal war. Or Ferrara by Arles. Not only that, what the hell is going on here? Not only that, but a crusade can be called in five years' time. Now, uh, I think Italy is should be high on the list. It's been in the the hands of the Islamic nation of. Italy, as it is at the minute, uh, for far too long. Far too long has this kingdom been ruled by an Islamic ruler. We need to restore. See, he was the first. So when did he? He came to power in 978. I don't know if he was Islamic when he first uh, inherited or whether he converted afterwards. But let's just say he was from the start. That's 978. That's like 30... One year, no, 29 years, plus another 21 there. That's quick math, 60 years. Near enough. Uh, it's a long time. That can't be right. No, 50 years. 50 years, sorry. I'm not having a good day with my math today, am I? <laughs> I'll cut that out of the video. You won't, know, you won't notice. Uh, right, so yeah. It's, long story short, long time. It's been a long time. It's been in the hands of the Muslims here, so it needs to. We need to put an end to this. Fifty years later, we'll finally get round to it. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. Maybe we can influence the Pope to, to crusade against Italy. We'll see what the targets there might be at the time. I mean, the Umayyads could do with being brought down a peg or two. To be quite honest with you, they've got all of that. They've got all of that. I even noticed they've got a little tiny slither of land right next to Egypt, which is Christian at the moment. They're like a bloody plague, getting everywhere they are. Okay, so, that's the state of the world as things currently stand. So what are all these flippy messages that have just cropped up? Speak, seeks to kill you, Johan. Okay, fine. Knowledge of cavalry. And, yeah, some lesser lords voting on a few little bits and bats. Right, oh, it's kind of important. Can never pause on the first of January, can you? Uh, our son, Prince Godwine of England, is uh, brooding and conscientious. We are tutoring him. We are training him. We are bringing him up to be a good, an honest boy, a fine ruler he will be. And so we will choose 
a stewardship focus which should be right up his street it should be right up our street really yeah, I mean we are shrewd but we're actually we're not a massive steward person to be honest with you um, kind of makes me think if we are pressing him for stewardship education maybe we should step down and appoint our steward to continue this education he is a master steward after all it would make sense right I've never had anybody else um, shooter. We do have the we do have the um, groom and heir goal. You may choose to right click once your child reaches twelve. You may choose to right click their portrait and choose introduced heir to realm. I don't think I have to be a guardian to do this. Oh, but he's a bastard. So I don't think we'll be able to do that. Oh. That might be uh, a problem. Right, okay. So in that respect, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. He's already he's, uh, he's already uh, tutoring my uh, daughter, Diana. Um, so, we're gonna, yeah, we're going we're gonna to give this a blast. We're going to give this a try. So, uh... Sign Guardian, yes. You, my friend, are going to be tasked with our most important job. You are going to tutor my son in the art of stewardship, for you are said to be quite masterful in your craft. How he has risen, eh? Steward, duke, and now tutoring the king's son. He must think all his Christmases have come at once. What have I done to deserve all of this? Bloody hell, I have just risen from, from rags to riches. Just another man who will no doubt have not a bad word to say about Godwine the kind and charitable it is. But yes, yeah, stewardship, education, now tutored by it. It means we're tutoring nobody right now. When the time finally takes over. Oh, he's our ward now and not our guardian, so he should be guardian. Oh, he has to accept. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I thought it was a given. Come on. King asks you to tutor his child. You're going to tutor your child, right? Introduce heir to the realm. Oh, we can do it. Maybe because we've legitimised him. Right. Well, there's no time like the present. And this is surely an opportunity. Oh, we've missed the, we've missed the feasting season. Oh, catastrophic error. Hello. <laughs> we've missed the feasting season. Right, it's okay. We'll just have a feast for this... Um, invite everybody, come forth, big feast. We're going to unveil our son to everybody. Formal introduction, pleasantries, formalities, and most importantly, lots of food and drink. Yes, that shall be the occasion. Sex bully unchaste, strongly worded letter. Of course. Would you have it any other way? And our expert steward... He's not collecting taxes. Just how much of an expert is he really? You're now going to ask. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're going to press on till January 1032. Another couple of years and let's see if we're any closer to Ireland. We have now almost the piety. We have now almost the piety. Prince Osulf of Wales. Chief Osulf of Fife, son of the... no, brother of the king, son of the king, who are you? Parent, no, son, yeah. Second eldest son of the king of Wales, who is still ruling with a fair and even hand, just like we are really. But he doesn't seem to be as festive as us though. Uh, right, so as Godwine introduces himself to Baron Athelstan, one of my uh, vassals, a Baron of Buckingham, he not only presents himself with grace, but also manages to impress Athelstan by skillfully complimenting him. Now, we are known for our gregariousness. It's good to see that's uh, rubbing off. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it's working, but uh, perhaps he has hidden talents that he's not showing the world. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Just going to pause it while I just have a bit of a play around with this now. Actually, there's a couple of... We're going to take, we need to save a bit of coin. Because if we're going to create the kingdom title, it's going to cost a pretty penny. So we can't spend any money right now. We're push, trying to push towards 30. 30 per month is the goal. Um, to get there, what we're actually going to do is we're going to continue to build holdings in uh, here if we can. Uh, and now, what I mean by that is we've obviously built castle towns and castle walls in our main keeps in all of these areas. Now what we're going to actually do is we're going to switch our attentions to the cities now. Oh, there's another barony here also, so there's another castle. So we're going to switch to the barony here and the city here and start giving those barons and those, um, you know, these mares a leg up and start building castle towns and castle walls in some of these places. Toll booths. Plus nine to tax income for a toll booth. Holy cow. That's pretty nifty, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, we're going to do that and have a look around there. Might as well do it now whilst we're here. Uh, city here. Anything to build? No. We lack the technology. Leeds. What about good old Doncaster? Good old Donny. No. Lack the technology. No surprise there then. Sorry, any Doncaster fans. Uh, city of Wyke. No, we lack the technology. Okay. We looked, but that's not working. Plan out the window. A plus for effort, though. Right, okay, so here we are. Here we are. Let's just see if we can actually fudge a claim. Oh, on a petty kingdom, it's uh, 363 piety. We don't need the petty kingdom. <laughs> We just need the chieftain. We just need one. One. But no, he's not happy with that. Just not happy. Okay. What about Leinster? No. No, not happy with that. Grouper. Is that a fish? Gnooper? What are you called? It's probably a silent G or something. Uh, Nooper. What about him? Nah, I nah, don't fancy that either. You? N nah, I don't think so. Okay, what about uh, you? Nah, I'm not interested. You, sir? Nah, I don't think. Oh, flipping hell. Right, so the Pope's not having any of it. None of that. And of course that's Scotland and that's uh, Norway. Once we become the King of Ireland, touchwood, fingers crossed. Not putting the commentator's curse on it or anything. Um, that might be dealing with. Can't have a blob of blue and a blob of white in the middle of the blob of green. And, uh, uh, will it be the blob of green? No, it'll be the blob of red, won't it? I think. Will it be red? Will it be green? We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so that, that's that situation. No go. No go. Okay, so we're, we're down to just two options here. We're just down to two options. Well, first of all, we can see if there are any potential female rulers. Child rulers coming into power would be pretty nifty because child rulers also don't fare too well in the Pope's eyes. Uh, that could give us a bit of a boost. Or female rulers. Is there any sort of a female child ruler? I mean, if it was to be bumped off, how far would we go as king? Would we sign off somebody being killed? He doesn't strike me as a man to plot such things. Even if it was the difference between gaining a title or not, he'd probably much rather have his uh, trusty chancellor fabricator claim. He might be waiting for a long time. Right, Leinster is a sole county. Any claimants that might wish to come swiveling their way down the road? Weak claims aren't good enough, really. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm a 
bit busy right now. Can you just flipping chill, chill out? Can't many claimants to this title, can they? It's a pinch brush. Oh, Oswain, Spy Master of Galloway. We claim again. Kind of clutching at straws, really, aren't we? And what about you? King of Scotland, that's not going to help us. What about you? Have you got a... Ooh. Ooh. Strong claim on the chieftain of Westmeath. An independent chieftain which forms a part of the De Jour Duchy of Meath. Which we're never going to get at the minute because of this situation here. But nonetheless, it'll stand as an independent county for now. Alternatively, we could just give it to this guy and have him manage both of these neighbouring lands. We could we could convert it into a feudal land first, also, possibly. And you're not taking it for ourselves, are we? Uh, right, okay. But at the very least, we'll bring him over and, and, and decide what we're going to do with him. We can wage war. He's not landed at the minute, which means that he wouldn't... Invite to court. Invite to court. Have him come along. Now we've got, we've got some... We've got some uh, ne'er-do-wells here, haven't we? Mind you, they're kind of... Uh, they kind of like me now. She won't like me. Hmm. Just thinking, you know. Foreign culture. If we were to press his claim, he'd be pretty happy with us. Would he then offer vassalisation? Judging by this, I'd say probably not. You still have the not de jour liege penalty and the foreign culture penalty. Right. Let's get him across to our court and we'll, we'll, we'll plan and plot, plot and prepare this. Uh, see, see what we're doing. So Godwine is now speaking to Bishop Aidsiger of Abingdon. Again, another skillful compliment. How is a man with zero diplomacy? Or should I say a boy? He's 12 now. No, he's a man grown. How is he performing this feat with zero diplomacy? Is he a child genius? Peace be with you, Irish. And of course, he has got a bloodline as this fella. Stretching back to the old nine hostages uh, uh, king. We've seen that before. Uh, so he's now here, which means we can now go to war to press his claim. Ooh. Ah, but he's also Irish. So we're going to suffer. Can you not ask him to convert? You can't ask to convert cultures, can you? You can ask to convert religion, but he's already Catholic. I'd have to give him a landed title. I don't have a landed title to give him right now. Here's a thought. Brain's working overtime, but not going anywhere. <laughs> if we could free up one of these lands here, 
give it to him and then take it that's that's it that is the old that is the option that is the option but how do we remove from position without causing a, a scene we have to hope that they do something foolish like plot our downfall you know Baron Athelstan of Buckingham again a renowned fighter and tactician. After having uh, introduced himself to Godwine, Athelstan approaches you with an offer. He's willing to spend some time teaching him in exchange for a fa or favour. Are you sure? Oh, he's only a lowly baron. How much damage can he do with a favour? Oh, God. Okay. I, I, I'll owe you a favour. Not a problem. We have finally found our Monica. The Bold. I don't know where that's come from. Not, it, it's not, it's, 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 it's pretty decent. Bold, a bold man. Sharp decision maker. <laughs> yes, he left things to his council, but he had the sign off and he made those decisions in the end. Boldly going to the next feast. Where no man has gone before. Uh, not a clue how that's happened. Um, could have been worse, couldn't it? Could have, that's, a, that's a positive moniker. Could have been far worse. Uh, Bishop Saber of Wincombe. Winchcombe is a renowned, godly, and learned vassal of yours. Having, having introduced himself, uh, we to teach him uh, for a favour. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. He's learning from all of these l experts in the field. It's Marshall learning that's not a bad outcome so far you know and with the uh, steward working his charms he's learning stewardship education I've got a good feeling about that boy I think he's gonna be a good ruler oh no So our uncle has popped his clogs and uh, his son has come into power with a hair lip, greedy, ambitious, kind, gregarious and cynical. It's all about average guy, generally a, generally a, a kind-hearted soul, sociable. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. So does that change? Anything with the elections? I don't think it will. At least uh, we'll, we'll, we'll soon we'll soon find out. No, it doesn't seem to be changing a great deal. Nah. Okay. Maybe it's by master. Young Methodios Method. There's method to his madness. Methodius has finished his education in stewardship. It is evident that he has excelled in his studies. Who was your tutor? <laughs> Fortune builder. He did pretty well. Yeah, average kind of guy, but uh, he might make somebody a nice husband. Was he my marshal? No, my, one of my commanders. Yeah, he was the commander that was a siege leader, right? Yes! Oh, he died a couple of a few years ago now. Sad day. Sad day. Oh! oh! Our marshal died age 70. Died of stress. Oh. It's a shame. He's been a loyal servant to the English uh, for many, many years. May he rest peacefully. And in the meantime, we have a commander who is uh, here, and we've got a commander who is here. He's 62, he's a little bit less, but he's brave. He's a brilliant strategist. He's a bit sloth and wrathful and shy and gluttonous, but that's good. He's deceitful, you see, as well. Wrathful and arbitrary. He would be a loyalist. Uh, so, I think... Uh, 
Glasso of Italy. Welcome the, to the council. We've got quite the multicultural council here, as you can quite clearly see. We have a Visigothic man. We have an Italian man. We have a Welsh man. We have a Hungarian man. And we have a German. Oh, we do have an Anglo-Saxon man, just about. Ethelbald, our uh, cousin. But other than that, <sighs> telling you, King Godwine is a thousand years ahead of his time, my friends. Embracing that, you know, that, 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 that culture. As was shown with his technology increase to tolerance. You see, he's, he's, he's embracing all these different cultures. Pulling all the best bits and appreciating what they bring to the table. And so far you can't argue with his methodology. There is method to his madness, as that child once said. So four loyalists, which means that any council changes should be quite smooth, should we need them to be. Right, three speed we go to finish off the session. 31 minutes in and uh, we've got a year and a half to go. I don't think we're getting uh, Ireland in this session somehow unless something else happens. How goes the war with Italy? Ooh, hang on a second. Hang on. Boss and the evil of Italy. Oh yes, he's still clinging on. And in fact, there's only one war left. That is the war against the Italian revolt. Um, and he's winning that. You're telling me he's won all of those other wars? No, he lost the Ferrara war. Because look, the Papacy actually have Ferrara. They have Ferrara, right? Yeah, Duchy Ferrara. It doesn't exist. I think it's been... I think it's been blown to bits. Don't think it exists anymore. Does it exist? Am I seeing this wrong? I don't think it exists anymore. So who is the Duke of Ferrara? You. Oh. Okay, so you have the Duke of Ferrara, technically speaking, but you don't own any of the land here. It's, it's gone across to the boat. Okay, this is slightly confusing. Uh, but yes, so that he's lost a little bit of land. Still holds the kingdom title, of course, which is an issue. Uh, the land that was taken by the Pope still happens to be completely Catholic. Still. Maybe he's used his power. Maybe it was sort of green and white like that, but because he's now in charge of it personally. I mean, if anybody's going to convert the population that quickly, you can trust the Pope to do it. Small mercies. Small mercies. Small steps. One step at a time. One Dutch at a time. We'll take him down, boys. Right. So, yes, King Ossulf has died aged 69 a good ruler, a just ruler, and now in charge we have King Egfrif of Wales as voted in of House Dunbar. He still holds exactly the same titles as his predecessor. He too is a crusading man, trusting, kind, diligent, groomed and brawny. A just and uh, fair man also. His vassals are going to absolutely love him because they voted for him, really. Um, so, yeah. Another stable ruler for Wales. It's good. The King of England has no sign, no sort of sight on Wales. He's happy to let them rule as a friendly neighbour. And to sort of cement the deal now that this king is in charge, he's relatively young. Similar age effect. 38, 44. Um, you know, and if you can't beat them, join them, the saying goes. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to cement our alliance, if we possibly can, with Wales. 
Rather than aim to take their land, they've got 7,000 troops. Let's use them. Not in a bad way, but let's merge together. And should enemies come on our shores, for the good of the entire of the island, let's work together. We have a son who is unmarried. We have a daughter who is unmarried. We have another daughter who is unmarried. Unbetrothed, rather. Um, so any of them are fair game. So let's take a look. So if we're going to marry off our son, it'd have to be to Princess Aidgith of Wales. Let's take a look at her. She's indolent and willful. There's nothing overly special about her. It would be a great alliance to have. Would he fall for it? I say fall for it. Okay, I keep using these words like this is some kind of a, like a seedy scheme. It's not a seedy scheme. This is, this is a, a proper alliance here. This is what we're wanting. No ulterior motives. I think she might be too high in the ascendancy for, for them to accept this. Oh, political concerns. That's going to affect every marriage between us. <laughs> They're worried that we've got something up our sleeve. We haven't. We just, honestly, we are just simply wanting to, 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 to merge. That's all it is. There's no ulterior motives here. I mean, he's probably too young for a start anyway, but just testing the water here. No. Ooh, well, that's looking a bit more promising. Let's just try this. Let's try that. It might be, it might be close, that. That's pretty close. Bit, we can't do anything because the opinion modifier is already maximum. The age is good age. Skills, she's lacking skills. Uh, prestige effects. That sucks. Political concerns. Uh, okay. Never mind. Actually, I mean, just. I don't think you, you can't have, you can't request a claim on a kingdom, can you? No, it's just duchies. Chancellor Duke Egidio is doing a superb job. I mean, he's a bit of a slow, and methodical worker when it comes to fabricating claims, but uh, I am having a bit of trouble in the town and the castle. City vassal opinion, feudal vassal opinion. We are all about the money at the moment, and the you know pleasing the city vassals is all good for income as the mayors. Oh, he's revoked a title from this woman, Maud. Oh dear. Are you not in my ranks already, sir? You are my marshal. How can you be a commander and a marshal? Makes no sense. He's already the marshal. I didn't switch them out, did I? Because they look very similar, don't they? No, he's the, he's the one that I didn't want, want in. Ooh. Ooh, wait a minute. We have a problem here. So uh, this chappy has raised a banner. 
A revolt war for Ulster. He wants to claim Ulster from my uh, steward. I mean, if you look at this man, he's pretty nifty. Sympathy for pagans, honest, brave, chaste, just, gregarious. He's, a, he's probably got that, has he got that blood? He's got that bloodline as well. How many men has he got? A thousand men compared to this guy who's got 696. This is going to be trouble, isn't it? This is going to be trouble. <clears throat> trouble in the office. I would rather have my steward maintain his position here. We could enforce a peace here, see if he would be open to it. He might refuse or ask for something in return. Yeah, this might not work, but... Um, Offer to join war, you can't join. We can join the war on his side, but we can't join the war on his side, right? We can join the war on our vassal. No, we can't. I thought we couldn't. Strange. Well, it's not strange. I knew, I knew that was the case. I was getting confused between the two. Uh, right then. So we can either ask him to peace or we can try something else. Would he be more likely to accept if he's got a higher opinion of us? You know what? Let's just see what he says. Oh, a favour. I would owe him a favour. pretty bad because if he's got any claims he might start asking me to press his claims strong claim on the duchy of ulster strong claim on the county of Rifney. he could use me to press those claims couldn't he like what like that other bloody guy did and then i'd have to press a claim on ulster for him which kind of defeats the purpose he'd have a and he wouldn't yes because he'd be truced but i wouldn't be truced oh no how do we how do we play this He's going to take it. Bloody hellfire. Bloody, 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 bloody. I mean, he's not forced to press the favour. And he's not on my count. Oh, but you'd get massive penalties, wouldn't you, for, for not upholding your end of the bargain. Oh, this could get messy if we... But I don't think we'll be able to ask him again if we refuse. <sighs> what to do? <sighs> oh, God, this is bloody tough. He's going to ask us to press one of these claims. This is against a man who swore fealty to us. Can, can they ask you to force one of their strong claim? You can't wage a war against your vassal with a strong, for somebody else. With, I don't think that. I don't think that will. Is, is that a thing? A vassal asking you to press a claim against another vassal. I don't think so. Sure. It would seem very strange. Asking to press a claim externally, fine, that's different. But asking to press a claim against a fellow vassal, I don't think that's a thing, you know. If it is, I stand corrected. But uh, do you know what? Let's try it. Oh, God. If he asks us to press a claim against Ulster now, I'm going to be fuming. <laughs> Uh oh, what's that? Who are you? She wants a matrilineal marriage with my courtier who has the strong claim against Westmeath. 
Oh no, I have big, I have bigger plans for him. Possibly. Maybe. Slightly. And does it involve you, my dear? <clears throat> Earl Beart Helm of Briefney has unearthed authentic love letters proving that Duke Athelbald of Cumbria is actually a bastard. His mother, Duchess Ephraid, had a torrid love affair with Bishop Rodri of Bangor. Is that true? He's a... He is... My kinsman, of course, Athelbald the Just. Oh my god, what kind of scandal is this? What kind of scandal? So his mother, Duchess of Flade of Mercia, was with Johan the Chaste. Um, she apparently had an affair. She was a Flandra because I remember her hitting on our ruler at the time. Uh, so it is, that does ring true. And she had lover's pox, evidence of sleeping around. So she probably had a few bastards here and there. Bishop Rodri of Banger. Oh my god. So you're a bastard child. Holy hell. Right then, what do we do with this? Denounce him. Revocation and arrest. Threaten. So that he stays out of factions. Or keep this information to myself. We're not going to do that, are we? We're not going to use this information. It serves to upset the balance of things. Things are just ticking along nicely. And, uh... Let's not rock the ship. It's only inevitable that many Johansons out there probably aren't as they seem. The amount of affairs and stuff that's been going on through the years. It's inevitable. Right, we've got one more year to go and we're already at 47 minutes. Drug Aidwine of Cornwall. Okay, so how are we faring down here in Italy? Are you still at war? Are you still at war? Nope. Revolt finished. He's still in power. Okay. My poem went all wrong. The feeling I wanted to express lost among the words and the result was just a piece of small pergament. This failure made me question my passion for writing poetry. Even more so as the new poet at court had demonstrated his superior memory and mastery only yesterday. Don't be jealous. Poet. No. We don't want to uh, have somebody else doctor our work. We could ask for help, though. No, I think uh, I think asking for help is certainly something that we wouldn't be ashamed of. We ask for help all the time. Roses are red, violets are blue, the sun shows its beauty, but true beauty is in you. Astonished, I noticed the tears in Irosin but as he told me, there was nothing more left for him to teach me. And so we have gained two diplomacy. Oh. Permanently? Permanently. A bit more of a poet now than we were before. Twenty nine point seven. That's a whisker away from thirty. Ooh.
Okay, it's a new Duke of Mercia. His father must have just died. Was slain in personal combat. By a bishop, no less. A child ruler trying to keep control of Mercia when the regent and the earl that has the most land within it is Johann of Warwick. Ooh, I don't fancy his chances. He's, uh, I, I can sense that uh, his ascendancy back to becoming the Duke of Mercia is only a few years away. He doesn't hate our guts anymore. Our father's taint has evaporated now, so we could probably could probably make this work if he was to uh, take power again. Okay. Young Nicholas. Not good. Not good, son. Not good. Right. It's been too long without a feast. We were hoping to celebrate becoming King of Ireland, but that could be uh, several years away, given the pace of things. So what we'll do is we'll wait till November again, and I'm trying not to forget. Although we could go carousing. Blessed people. Bring out the holy relic in procession and bless the fields. Yes, bless. Bless them for a bountiful and prosperous harvest. 29.82 the magic 30 is a whisker away uh, right what am I doing carousing yes money that's right we've got a bit of money to spend which means that it's time for us to invite a smith not for any fighting things, because we're not going. We don't want a blade. We don't want to armor. We're never going to use it or wear it. We've got those lying around in a chest uh, of our fathers. But what we don't have, we don't have any sort of crown jewels. Johansson crown jewels, and we've had many Johansson kings of England. So we shall now be the first king, the first Johansson king, to commission the crafting of official crown jewels. Yes, we will. And they shall be glorious jewels. So they shall. I'm kind of thinking, right? Here's me thinking. I'm kind of thinking. It's probably better sense to fabricate a claim on a single county. We only need one more county. We don't need two. We needed two initially when we were going for this, which is why we went for it in the first place. But rather than have an issue with taking one land and not both and having the guy hate our guts next to us and stuff um, let's just let's just take this let's just switch our attentions to a simple single county and hope that that fares better than trying to fabricate a claim on whatever the hell he's trying to fabricate a claim on. Maybe he's getting confused. Shall I get the county? Shall I get the shall I get the duchy? I don't know. Oh, it's just too much work. I'm I'm getting old now. I'm 65, 60 something. No, I'm 57. That's close enough. Uh Fastalization. Still just throwing the question out there. Just in case. No. 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 Okay. You're not plotting anything, are you? Keeping my close eye on all people here. All people of this realm. Oh, he's turned to uh, he's turned to feudal. He's turned to feudal of his own. His own volition, which is good. Okay. Wow, she's a woman. And even that's not good enough for a claim. Because she's uh, uh, only a chiefess level. Is there any really, really unholy... Rulers here. Nah. Like desperate times.
times this. <laughs> Desperate times, I'm telling you. Desperate, come on. Desperation. Kicking in. When you're so close to something, when, you, when something is not in your, on the horizon or is miles away, you just, you just plod along, not a, not a problem. But when it's so close, you can almost taste it. What is the issue? It's because of too low rank. That's the issue. Minus 41, base reluctance score. Damn it. Come on, Mr. Duke of Man. Do something, will you? E Castletown built in York and Stamford Bridge. That should take us to over 30. Oh, yes. At the very least, at the very least, we shall have our objective. 30 gold per month. He has achieved what he set out to achieve, and that is to ensure that the country prospers. The treasury is overflowing. And people are just having a good old time. I think he's. I think he's. Uh, I think he's achieved that. I think he's achieved that. Hmm. Wonder if it's time for a change. Bit of rulership, maybe. For the benefit of his son. Not wanting to be outdone too much by his underling. Hmm. Play it by ear. A renowned goldsmith is travelling through England and my courtiers are prattling excitedly about his work. Perhaps I should invite this man and employ his services. Yes. That is what we have hired him for. He accepts our invitation and arrives at court with a week later. He presented me with some sketches. I will order an impressive set. 500 gold! <sighs> There's no point in doing things by half measures. These are the family crown jewels. Take that thought out of your mind, dirty people. These are the family jewels, the family crown jewels. The first crown jewels of the Johansson family. They have to be... the be sort of you know revered and and and, and uh, you know and, and, and lauded over for many generations to come and it's just a, a fancy beautiful set oh look at them they're so nice no impressive set impressive yeah there goes 500 gold and there we are 30.29 we've Reach the threshold. Right. So they're all talking. But he's helping my son. Yeah. Yeah, helping my son. Good. Maybe my son is, you know, he's, he's showing, he's showing good uh, social skills. He's, he's, he's pressed the vassals. He's now talking and showing an interest with the smith. He's, he, he's proven to be a very active, inquisitive child. He's also gained temperance, which is kind of funny considering his dad is almost the opposite of temperance. He's not quite gluttonous, but I mean, you know, not far off it. I've been kept up to date on the progress of the crown jewellery. I knew they were nearing completion, but when the heavy box was brought to me today, I was still momentarily breathless with excitement. Oh, a crown of pearls, a ruby scepter, and a golden sword. Three items for the price of one. Oh, let's have a look at them. Let's have a look at them. 
Let's have a look at these bad boys. There we go. What have we got in here? A crown of pearls, which we are currently wearing. Not some poxy crappy crown, but it's not quality three. It's quality two. But covered with pearls of all sizes, complemented by sapphires, as well as cameos depicting religious characters engraved in mother of pearl. How fantastic. The crown of pearls. You know your task here, people. We need a name for the crown. We also have a ruby scepter. Again, quality two. A golden scepter adorned with opals, almond, almonds. <laughs> he really does love his food. Uh, almondines uh, and pearls. Crowned by an impressively big and lustrous ruby. Uh, name, please. And a golden sword, quality too. Actually, uh, a gilded blade and hilt, whilst useless in battle, it's ornamental, of course, will impress their holders every subject. A pommel decorated with a single a magnificent emerald. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Look at that. Lots of finger bones, king's bathe, Brutus Festivus. Uh, all in the, uh, all in the, uh, in, all in the, all in the treasure chest. The armor was destroyed, of course. Uh, that horrific armor. But now three fantastic items. Uh, yeah, and a name for the sword as well. Uh, has been added to the treasury at the cost of five hundred gold pieces. But it's well worth it. It's well worth it. They shall be forever a part of the family history. Many kings that will come after me, your handsome kings, will uh, thank me for having such beautiful, impressive artifacts to show off to their vassals. Ah! No armour is large enough to fit me. No horse strong enough to carry me. Leeds' blacksmith is currently working day and night designing a new reinforced throne for my courtroom. Just so I can have something that is stable and wide enough to sit on. Is that an embarrassment? Is it cause for us to go on a diet? Or is it... No! I'm not going on a diet. No chance. I am enjoying life. I am enjoying life. And while I'm happy and enjoying life, it allows my mind to be clear, to spread the happiness and joy amongst my people. It is working so far, is it not? If I go on a diet, I'm going to be stressed to the hilt. My mind is going to be clouded with nothing but the thought and the images of pheasants and turkeys and geese and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm not going to be able to function properly. No. Widen the throne. It's not a problem. Okay, well, in this session, I don't think much has really happened. <laughs> oh, France has got a little bit of blue. A bit, a bit of blue down here. Look at that. Oh, there we go. We're on. Uh, France has got a little... That's looking a bit, a tiny, tiny smidge more promising uh, in terms of pushing back the Umiads. A combined effort of Aquitaine, Navarra, France, a bit of Aragon and Barcelona... Yeah, good to see a bit of teamwork from the Catholic nations. Maybe we should just throw a hat in the ring and get ourselves down. You know, come come and uh, yeah, liberate Portugal or something like that. Uh, right, anyway, so there's nothing else really that's going on I think that's worth reporting on. Everything seems pretty much as it was. But yes, you've got some things to name, some items to name. And if you've got any kind of other ideas as about how we can might uh, sort of nab our last county from Ireland other than the options that we currently have on the table. Uh, feel free to shout up, but uh, yeah, it's just a waiting game, a game of patience. And it's not a problem, I missed a paste again. Oh. Okay, it's gonna have to be carousing. In the next session at the start, we shall carouse. He's, 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 uh, he's, he's, he's actually dieting without even knowing it, isn't he? No feast or no flipping festivities for a couple of years at least now. Are you slipping? Uh, no, no, uh, we shall be back on it. And showcasing my lovely pearl crown for all to see. Yes, so join me in the next session. We shall continue to see if we can get this done. It's almost there. We just need a little bit of luck. Some hard work from our Chancellor. 
and uh, maybe just maybe if times get desperate we might have to go to the council to suggest or to see or not suggest but to see if they would be willing to debate the possibility of a little bit of uh, intrigue and plotting maybe to get things done I don't think the king would sign it off like but you never know stranger things have happened right so yes until next time see you soon